all of us believe that the optimal way to treat any patient with CLL where you can is in a clinical trial where you're advancing the field to try to always find what's the next best treatment that we have available. For those centres that don't have clinical trials available, for those patients in whom at whatever centre they're at there is no clinical trial available for them, we have kind of clear treatment guidelines for how we should be thinking about treating a patient. So a young fit patient who doesn't have a P53 abnormality should still be considered a candidate for FCR. I think there's very intriguing data on the using the mutational status of the immunoglobulin gene that those patients that have mutated immunoglobulin genes are going to do extremely well with that therapy and I think it would be foolhardy to throw chemotherapy away altogether. I think our American colleagues um, who've got access to these agents uh, often at an earlier time frame than we have are clearly voting with their feet in that ibrutinib is clearly moving much more rapidly into the upfront setting, whereas in Europe, in the absence of P53 abnormalities, it's still second and subsequent lines of, of, of therapy. I think whereas you could consider second line chemoimmunotherapy for a patient, particularly for that a longer duration of response. I think many of us are already feeling that, you know, the, the types of responses that we're seeing and the data that's emerging that suggests that results with the brutinib are better in those patients treated in second line than those treated third or fourth line would suggest that m most of us would move to a BCR inhibitor in second line for many of those patients and certainly would do so if they have a P53 abnormality and then reserve at the moment venetoclax for, uh, in its licensed indication for those patients who've either failed or are intolerant of a BCR inhibitor. So the discussions I'm having with patients is explaining the rationale for why, for their particular circumstances, you know, treatment with chemoimmunotherapy is the right treatment for this person. Patient with a P53 abnormality, why chemoimmunotherapy would not be the treatment, but ibrutinib would be. Um, and then thinking particularly about the role of stem cell transplantation, which has become very unfashionable in this disease right now with the availability of abrutinib, idelalacib and venetoclax, is that you've always got to think it's safe to defer the transplant as long as you've got a next option. But if somebody's already been through chemoimmunotherapy, abrutinib and venetoclax, what at the moment is your next statement? At the seminar today, Claire Dearden made a very nice step about patients surviving by the emergence of the next new drug. We haven't yet got the emergence of the next after venetoclax yet, so we're going to have a little bit of a gap uh, where we're going to have to be using the agents that we have most effectively and thinking about how it is that we, we move forward. But of course, what we also have to remember in CLL is that the majority of patients aren't going to be suitable candidates for, uh, for transplantation. Now, even in a centre like my own, where transplantation for CLL is, is a very kind of much an interest that we had in terms of treating these patients, my experience is of many of the patients that I've got on venetoclax that I'd thought would be a bridge to transplant, those patients are finding they're tolerating the drug well they're in durable remissions, many of those patients already MRD negative and voting with their feet to stay on the drug. But my approach is to be constantly talking to the patient about, you know, we haven't got a next line of therapy. I don't want to miss the window of opportunity when something like a transplant could cure you. So we should be watching those patients carefully. And my approach is to try to make sure that you'll have a a donor available for those patients in whom a transplant would be a suitable option so that you can move quickly onto transplant and not have the patient's disease explode. The real challenge that we all have is, you know, the potential emergence of Richter's transformation, which now I think, even with all these new agents available, really represents our total unmet need at the present time. And it's the complication that we all fear most in, for our patients in terms of how do we salvage those patients back. If we can, though that's certainly, for me, an absolute indication for a stem, stem cell transplant. Unfortunately, our experience is, is that many of these patients are not responding to salvage therapy with Richter's and, and we just don't have good treatments for those patients.